Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chetan. Uh, I'm the lead for enterprise support team for the enterprise segment in Singapore and Vietnam. Co-presenting with me today is Mark, and Mark is the senior software engineering manager at Grab. So today, we'll present that how customers can improve their price performance using AWS Graviton instances. So we have an exciting agenda lineup for you today. Uh, I'll start by sharing what's the silicon innovation on AWS and Graviton instances. Then you'll learn how Graviton processors are designed to maximize the performance. And then I'll also share a framework on how you can move your workloads from x86-based instances to Graviton. And then I'll invite Mark on stage to share how Grab moved more than 300 applications on, Gravi on Graviton and some of the key learnings and the takeaways. So let's start by knowing what's the silicon innovation in AWS. So AWS invested years in designing custom silicon optimized for the cloud workloads. And it primarily gives three benefits, which is improved performance, lower the cost, and enhanced security. Example, Nitro Systems. So Nitro Systems are the foundation for the modern compute infrastructure. It is a combination of a dedicated hardware with a lightweight hypervisor to enable the faster innovation and the enhanced security. AWS Inferentia. It provides high performance at lowest cost for your deep learning inference applications. So AWS Inferentia delivers up to 2.3 times better, uh, higher throughput and also up to 70% lower cost per inference. The Graviton instances, which will, which will be the focus for today's uh, session. With Graviton, these are the custom-built 64-bit ARM-based processors by AWS. And with that, we can deliver the best price performance for your compute workloads. Now, Graviton 2 offers 40% better price performance as compared to the other uh, fifth-generation EC2 instances. And with Graviton 3, which are the latest in the AWS Graviton processor family, they provide up to 25% better compute performance as compared to Graviton 2. Now let's look at why we are building the custom chips. Innovation. So by offloading the software functionality to a dedicated hardware, we're able to rapidly deliver compute instances. And also, it allows you to innovate faster using the latest technologies. Specialization. We can optimize the hardware for our use cases. It helps us to focus on the right feature sets and optimize for the cost and performance. Speed. So the team that's building the entire stacks operate under the one roof, which means from building the product to delivering the service in the data center is owned by the one single team. Security. As we know that security is job zero, which means it's important than your number one priority. With Nitro Systems, they have the built-in security at the chip level that protect against the potential attacks. Nitro enclaves. So they provide greater protection for sensitive data by using the isolated compute environments. Now let's dive deep more on AWS Graviton. So thousands of customers who have already adopted Graviton and rely significant savings for their applications are benefiting by the compute performance, compute and the price performance for Graviton. So Graviton is highly energy efficient. It uses up to 60% less energy than the comparable instances in AWS. Now Graviton is available for the EC2 workloads and also for the AWS managed services. The Graviton 2, which was launched in 2019, provides up to 40% better price performance as compared to the equivalent x86 base instances. And you can use them for the wide variety of workloads. That includes your application servers, microservices, gaming, open source databases, and in-memory caches. One of the key features for Graviton is that every vCPU is a physical core, which means there's more isolation between the vCPUs. With Graviton 3, we have enhanced the price performance benefits even further. It provides up to 25% better compute performance than Graviton 2. 
So overall, you are able to run the cloud native applications more securely at scale. Now, these are some of the instance types that Graviton supports. The Graviton 2 family, such as M6G, C6G, R6G, and the Graviton 3 family instances, such as M7G, C7G, and R7G. So for your general purpose workloads, you can use T4G instances. For the cost effective, high performance at a low price, you can use C family instances. And for the memory optimized use cases, you can use R family instances. With G5G, it's the first time that ARM-based instances are able to provide the GPU acceleration on AWS Cloud. So with Graviton, the overall goal is to push the price performance envelope for the wide variety of application workloads. Now, the picture that you see on the top right is the actual Graviton 3 processor. As the name suggests, Graviton 3 is the third generation of the Graviton processors. Now, comparing Graviton 3 performance as compared to the previous uh, generation processors, it provides up to two times higher floating point per, uh, performance and also two times faster cryptography performance. So each Graviton package has 55 billion transistors. That's made up of seven chiplets. At the center, there's a main compute die. At the edges, four DRAM controller dies and two PCIe dies for the IO connectivity. Now Graviton 3 is the first time in AWS fleet where it supports DDR5 memory, which means it provides 50% better bandwidth as compared to the previous gen uh, DDR4. So overall, it enables high-speed access to the data in the memory. Now, all of these instances are powered by AWS Nitro systems, which again are the combination of a dedicated hardware and the lightweight hypervisor for the maximum performance. Now, let's look at Graviton vCPUs and compare that how it is different from the uh, other x86-based vCPUs. The vCPUs on the uh, x86-based instances such as C6i is hyper-threaded, which means the vCPUs share resources and there is less isolation than in the case of Graviton. Now, every vCPU in Graviton processor is a physical core. This means there's no simultaneous multi-threading, SMT, and more isolation between the vCPUs. Now the cores are connected together with a mesh of two terabyte per second bisectional bandwidth, so the applications can move more quickly from core to core when they're sharing the data. With large L1 and L2 cache for every vCPU on Graviton 3, a large portion of your workload will fit in the cache without having to go to the memory. Now let's look at how customers can achieve sustainability goals by moving their workloads to Graviton. Now as organizations align their business with sustainable practices, it's important to look at the every functional area. So customers improve power efficiency of the compute workload by switching to Graviton 2 base instances. So Graviton 2 delivers up to 3.5 times better CPU performance per watt than the other processors in AWS. Now with Graviton 3 base instances, I mean, it uses up to 60% less energy compared to the non-Graviton EC2 instances. Now, something that we announced last year was a, a customer carbon footprint tool. Now, it provides you with a simple visualization to show what's the historical carbon emission and also estimate the emission that can be avoided by running your workloads on AWS as compared to the on-premise data centers. Now, we have extended the performance uh, benefits of uh, Graviton2 to the managed services as well. For example, Amazon RDS. So engines such as PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariaDB can provide a fully managed relation database service using the Graviton-based instances. With Lambda, you can get up to 34% price performance improvement by running your Lambda functions on Graviton. 
And migrating your serverless functions can be really easy, especially if you use the interpreted runtime such as Node.js or Python. So overall, is the price performance benefits with little or no code changes required. Now let's look at the Graviton ease of adoption. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, which is if you're using AWS managed services, there are virtually no efforts to move your workloads to Graviton. And applications which are in high-level programming languages, such as Python, Node, Ruby, Java, PHP, they typically require a redevelopment. So applications which are written in lower-level programming languages, such as C, C++, Rust, or Go, they require a recompilation. So let's see that how you can plan and execute the migration to Graviton. So primarily, there are five stages. One, you prepare the AMIs, which means you make sure that the AMIs are compatible with Graviton-based instances. Then prepare the applications and ensure that applications and the softwares are always running on the latest versions. And later, deploy to AWS Graviton test environment, test your application performance, and finally, move them through the production. So let's look at the typical use case. So at this time, the entire customer workload is being served from a stack that's running on x86-based instances. There's a build environment, there's a test environment, and the production. So first thing is to identify all software dependencies in your production environment, and check for ARM64 support for each of your dependencies. Many a times, there will be existing binaries built uh, for ARM64. If not, provider may have ARM64 support in their roadmap. Then it's about creating a build and the, uh, and the test environment for Graviton-based instances. So it's suggested to test your workloads on Graviton using end-to-end -end testing. That includes unit integration and acceptance testing that should be performed. And later, when the infrastructure as a code has been updated, deploy a new ARM64-based production stack in parallel to the existing x86-based one. So at this time, there's no production traffic being served from Graviton stack. And later, using weighted routing, example using ALB, you can send a small percentage of your traffic to the new stack that you have created on Graviton. Now it's important to note that you should monitor critical indicators before migrating the larger percentages of your workloads to ARM64. So once we think it's the right time, you can shift your entire customer workloads to the Graviton stack. And later, you can decommission the previous stack that was running on x86 workloads. So now I want to invite Mark on stage and share with us Grab's Graviton2 adoption journey with us. OK, uh, so I'm Mark. Uh, I'm from Grab. I don't suppose Grab needs too much of an introduction because uh, we're present locally. I suppose many of you are uh, aware of what we're doing. If you're not, uh, we are a super app which provides services such as uh, food, transport, payment. Uh, in Grab, I'm um, part of the Apex and DevX team, which I'm going to introduce later. So um, for the migration to Graviton, I want to let you know a little bit of uh, context first. Uh, and then I'm going to explain what we planned, how we executed it, and I want to also summarize the, the takeaways. Uh, so like I was about to say, uh, I'm part of Apex DevX. So we are a platform team. What we try to do for backend services is to make sure that the service teams can focus on writing the code and not so much on building, testing, deploying, or running their own infrastructure. So we try to do that for all of them. At the moment, we support about 500 backend services. So the reason why we decided to migrate to Graviton was to reduce the cost to serve. So that's how much it costs in cloud expenses to process the orders that we, we do. Uh, so for that migration, we had 
400 backend services in scope, uh, which is about 80% of what we have in total. And we expect it to save costs on two fronts. First, for like for like replacements, same instance um, specs. Graviton is a bit cheaper than Intel or AMD instances by 10 or 20%, depending on the cases. But also, the performance of Graviton instances, like Chetan explained, is a little bit higher. So you don't need quite as many instances to serve the same load. So that's another way that you can save, essentially. Um, so a few words about the, the stack that we are running. So we've got uh, Go services. Most of the backend services are written in Go. Uh, we pack them into Docker images, and then we deploy them onto EC2 instances. We've got an initiative to migrate to Kubernetes, but at the time of the migration to Graviton, we were still uh, leveraging VMs directly. So. Um, in order to prepare for the Graviton migration, first we planned. So uh, we did that with Chetan, who is from uh, the enterprise support. Uh, and basically, Chetan, you helped us plan everything. So you, you gave us the same explanation that you gave already, essentially, uh, and you know, told us what the steps would be. So that was really useful. And you also helped us plan for capacity in order to make sure that there would be uh, enough provision Graviton instances when we'd want to migrate. Um, but from a technical perspective, uh, we had to worry about building our ARM-compatible AMEs, about modifying our CI-CD pipeline to create uh, essentially uh, executables and Docker images that run nicely on ARM. And we'd also have to you know, plan a strategy for the uh, rollout. So what we did is that we went for canary deployments for each service. So we route a part of the traffic to uh, the new Graviton instances to make sure that everything works. We'd monitor them for a little while. And after that, we, we'd do a rollout. The rollout, because we've got so many services, was progressive. We started by the lowest criticality services. Uh, these are the services which you don't exactly want them to break, but if they do break, that's not as bad as the high criticality services. So we tried first on the low criticality services to get confidence that our process and our testing methodology was working before moving on to the higher criticality ones. So for the AME, uh, we use Packer and Ansible to, to create our AMEs. So Packer, essentially, if you're not too familiar with it, it creates an instance from an existing AME. It runs some scripts. Uh, in our case, we use Ansible. Uh, and then it essentially terminates the instance, snapshots the EBS, and creates a new AME from that. So that's a way to customize AMEs that you've got. So Packer is fairly easy to uh, adapt from Intel or AMD uh, into Graviton, because you just need to change the instance type and the starting AME that you've got. Uh, so that worked fairly smoothly, but what we uh, discovered is that uh, we had one of our upstreams that did not support ARM at the time, uh, a proprietary one, so we didn't have the luxury to recompile it ourselves. So we had to uh, you know, check with them and make sure that they deliver support for, for ARM. Uh, but that's definitely something we'd have, we could have checked a little bit earlier. Uh, so if you're planning your own Graviton migration, that's really something to keep an eye out for. In terms of uh, modifying the CI pipeline, I think we're quite lucky because we're using Docker and Go, and both of them support cross-compilation natively. Uh, so what that means is that it doesn't matter what is the architecture that you're using for building, you can target any other architecture you like. Uh, so we didn't have to change our CI farm. We still run uh, CI on AMD instances. Uh, but those instances were able to create uh, Go executables and Docker images that run on ARM. Uh, one thing that we discovered, though, is that uh, CGO, which is the part of Go that you use for linking C and C++ code to uh, your, uh, the rest of your Go code, uh, although that works actually relatively well, if you're uh, using shared objects, so if you're uh, dynamically linking, uh, you may face problems because in order to dynamically link, you need to have the, the shared objects for your target architecture installed on the machine that's doing the build. Uh, so that can be a little bit tricky. Uh, in our case, we actually sidestepped the problem. There were few enough services that we're trying to link with shared objects that we decided to 
put them aside and not migrate them for the time being. Uh, it didn't have a massive impact because there were really few services in that case. Uh, but again, if you're doing this for yourself, you, you really want to be careful about that if you're using Golang. Uh, and another thing that we discovered is that we had a one Python package for which the, the um, so the package was delivered as binary for AMD, but as source code for ARM. So essentially what that means is that if you don't have a tool chain installed in your Docker image, which uh, typically is the case, right? You, you don't want to ship the tool chain to production. Uh, in that case, you're going to be able to build your Docker image just fine for Intel or AMD, but not so much for ARM. Uh, so we had to work around that, install a tool chain in order to install that Python package, later remove the tool chain. Um, so that's, that's something we discovered. Again, something that you may want to consider if you're doing such a migration yourselves. In terms of execution, like I said, um, we did uh, canary deployments. Uh, for each service before doing the, the full migration, so we got some confidence that uh, we were not going to run into too many problems. And for the deployment itself, the way we, we manage that is that we built some automation that, we'd, that would go and change the launch configuration in our ASGs. So the way it works is that you replace uh, in your launch configuration the type of instance and the AME that you want to use. And once you've done that, you can start draining your old Intel or AMD instances. And uh, essentially, your, your ASG will take care of the rest and create new Graviton instances to, um, to replace. And that's how you can do a progressive rollout with uh, not a lot of uh, configuration. That, that is something that works really smoothly. So there's a few things that we discovered as we migrated those services uh, in production where we received a lot of load. The first one is that we were using some software that was compiled quite a long time ago, and that was not taking care of the uh, latest compiler and hardware advancement, in particular with respect to cryptography. So we had some crypto load that was actually running painfully slowly because it was trying to do uh, everything in software and, and not taking advantage of hardware acceleration. So for that, the solution was fairly simple, just recompile the software and take advantage of, uh, of the latest compilers, really. Uh, so, so that's something that was actually a bit painful to discover, but once we understood the root cause, it was reasonably easy to address. And another thing that I want to point out is that the performance of your workload uh, on Graviton is really quite dependent on your workload. Uh, so in some cases, for some services, the performance for us was a lot better on Graviton than it was on Intel. But that was not always the case. There were some services for which we didn't really see any performance improvement uh, on Graviton compared to Intel or AMD. Uh, so that's really something to keep in mind. In particular, if you've got very tight SLAs, for instance, you want to make sure that in Graviton there's not going to be any extra latency, for instance. So there's no way around it. You really have to test thoroughly for each of the services that you want to migrate. OK, so to wrap up a little bit, for us, the migration was an overwhelming success. We managed to migrate 80% of the services that we were targeting. We were not really trying to target 100%. We were trying to target as much as possible to really reduce the costs. Uh, so we, we saved quite a bit. Uh, like I said, over comparable instance types, the savings that you have by migrating directly from Intel or AMD to Graviton are uh, 10 or 20%, depending on the cases. Uh, so, so that's what we realized so far. And what we are aware of is that we can also fine tune our scaling policies in order to try to take advantage of the improved performance. Uh, so because Graviton does not use uh, simultaneous multi-threading, you can actually run your Graviton instances a little bit hotter, which means that if you use a CPU scaling policy, you, you can increase the threshold a little bit, which means that you need fewer instances to serve the same amount of load. Um, what I want to show as well is the, the last graph. Uh, so that graph is quite nice. It's one of the services for which we're really glad we migrated to uh, Graviton. So we had a lot of CPU spikes just before the migration. But after that, uh, you can see there's no more CPU spikes. So for that particular service, 
for that particular workload, it was really worth it for us to migrate to Graviton. The service is a lot more stable now. Um, yeah, so that's really it from my perspective. I'm going to invite Chetan back. Thanks, Mark, for sharing that. Those were some of the key learnings what customers can adopt while moving to Graviton. OK, so let's look at some of the key uh, resources and the conclusions. Key learnings. So Graviton processors are the custom designed by AWS to give you a better price performance in cloud. And Graviton 2-based processors provides you 40% better price performance as compared to the comparable x86-based instances. And Graviton 3 provides up to 25% better performance than the sixth generation AWS Graviton 2-based instances. Now, Graviton-powered instances can be used for a wide variety of workloads. It can be application servers, uh, in-memory caches, microservices, gaming servers, and the high-performance computing as well. And then most Linux and the open source-based applications uh, it can easily run on the, multi uh, on, on the multiple processor architectures, uh, such as Graviton. Yeah. So these are some of the uh, you know, uh, links that you, know, you can refer if you're planning your journey from x86 instances to Graviton. First one is the Getting Started Guide. And then, especially for developers, if they want to know about the best practices about how to test their workloads on Graviton, they can refer to this runbook. And then a testimonials and blogs from some of the customers who have successfully migrated their workloads to Graviton. So that sort of brings us to the end of the session. But before we go, it's something important about the skillsbuilder.aws. So you can visit the Skills Builder. That's our online center to explore over 300 free digital courses, hands-on labs, and the role-based games. Thank you for attending. Uh, please fill in the service. It helps us to improve for the summit experiences in future. Thank you for joining us for the session, and hope you have a great day ahead. <laughs>